Hey there, Jeff. Well, like you said, we are almost 24 hours away from Purdue basketball taking to the court once again in the March Madness tournament in the first round. They're going to be playing Grambling State, who defeated Montana State late last night. And let me just say, after speaking with both Purdue and Grambling State today, both teams are very, very eager to play, especially Grambling. Now, the Tigers came back from a deficit last night, seven points in overtime. They got that big win, and the team traveled from Dayton, Ohio, to Indianapolis, where they took to the floor to practice just 12 hours later. Head coach Dante Jackson says it's been a very quick turnaround with very little sleep, but they're going to just keep trying to, quote, Fight the good fight and press forward. The Tigers are hoping to build on the stout defense we saw yesterday in the second half, which included over 20 defensive rebounds and six steals, which Jackson says ultimately helped them get the win. He adds that the only way they can easily get beat is if they don't help themselves and don't play their brand of basketball. Jackson also says he's excited to play and to participate in this tournament, get his team the exposure they deserve, and the players seem to share that exact same level of excitement. I was excited because, I mean, we come into the game as underdogs, so, I mean, it's nothing, it's nothing to be worried about. I mean, everybody expects us to win, so we just got to play like like we have nothing to lose. And a man who has nothing to lose is dangerous. Um, it's, it's it's a family, you know, it's a group of guys full of chemistry, you know. Like like I always say, it's, it's, it's guys that we might be arguing right now, but five minutes later, we high-fiving and giving each other hugs. So it's like, we, we all know where we're coming from. We all know it. We, we want the same goals. But Grambling State is hoping to, but Purdue is hoping to not repeat history this upcoming year. And Grambling State has a very tall task ahead of them taking on the Boilermakers. Yeah, I asked Fletcher Lawyer how many times last year's upset against FDU has been brought up. And he said he started counting on television. He said he got up to six times until the team decided to mute the television. But Fletcher Lawyer also told me that looking at Grambling State, they have a bunch of guys that can all score. He said, like last night, you saw a guy who gets two points a game get 19. So they need to lock Lock in on the scouting report to avoid any player having a career night. Mason Gillis agreed that they have a good matchup on their hands, and he said the Boilers are a lot more confident this time around. He said they've learned from their losses, and even after their wins, instead of being satisfied, they look back and analyze those games and figure out what they can do even better. The team watched that Montana State Grambling State game last night, and they were most impressed by the way the Tigers fought through the end and came out with the win in overtime. They played really hard. Uh... Yeah, you know, they pressure the ball really well. They you create turnovers. Um, and one thing that stuck out to me is, you know, they were down for majority of the game, but they didn't give up. Um, they had plenty of times where they could have, you know, just laid down and, you know, let Montana State win that game. But uh, they did what was needed to do and, you know, came out victorious. Yeah, I watched the second half. Um, first half I had to finish a movie um, that I watched on the bus ride over. Um, but, yeah, I ended up watching it. And I'm just excited to be back here and playing. I think similar to last year, um, they play similar style of play. I mean, they're five out. Um, they all can make plays, and we just got to play really good defense. Obviously, I think everybody's just super excited, especially tomorrow, to get out there and play. And we're we're definitely going to be uh, bringing the maximal energy, I guess. You could say. Now that the open practice is over, up next is game day tomorrow. And if you know Zach Eady, you know he's superstitious. So he said it's time to eat his sushi, get his naps in so that he's well rested tomorrow. And he doesn't know where he's going to get his sushi yet, but he's superstitious. He has to do that before every game. So now it's just time to lock in, go through the motions, and get ready for the big task tomorrow. And we'll see if Purdue is able to, you know, not repeat history tomorrow night at 725 when tip-off happens. But that is going to do it from our coverage here in Gamer. Fieldhouse. So reporting in Indianapolis, Bree Shackleford, Kelly Hallinan, Sports 18.